Vincent's next big screen appearance after Curtain Call at Cactus Creek was the 1951 swashbuckler Adventures of Captain Fabian. <laughs> The story begins in New Orleans in 1860 where a young Creole maid named Leah Mariette, played by Michelin Prell, works for the Winthrop family, along with her aunt Jezebel, played by Agnes Moorhead. Both are treated as inferiors by the Winthrops, especially young Cynthia Winthrop, played by Zany Campin. The Winthrops are going away for a week, and while they are gone, Leah and Jezebel decide to throw a party at the estate. <laughs> Cynthia's fiance, George Brissac, played by Vincent Price, returns to find a wild party in full swing. What do you want? What's going on in here? It is revealed that he and Leah are former lovers, and he grabs and kisses her, fueling the rage of Philippe, the Winthrop's club-footed stable boy, who wanted Leah for himself. That's a fine gentleman, George Leah winds up bludgeoning Philippe with George's cane, killing him. George heads to the police to file a report, assuring Leah that he'll smooth everything out. However, upon his return, he informs the police that Leah is to blame and she is arrested. Meanwhile, Sea Captain Michael Fabian, played by Errol Flynn, arrives in port. He holds a past grudge against the Brissick family, and upon learning the true details of Leah's predicament, shows up at the trial and threatens to present evidence condemning George as a murderer unless she is freed. It turns out the judge is actually George's uncle, another Brissac, and he agrees to acquit Leah in order to avoid a scandal. Afterwards, Fabian purchases a tavern for Leah, setting her and Jezebel up as owners. He then visits George and blackmails him, threatening to expose him as a murderer unless he pays back the $5,000 he just spent on the bar, to which George reluctantly agrees. 5000 I said. Cash. You're mad. You're talking nonsense. How would you like to try explaining to a jury what you were doing in the Winthrop home the night Philip was murdered? Leah and Fabian become an item, and Leah changes the name of the bar to Shay Leah. One day, while Fabian is away at sea, two of George's friends come into the bar and inform her that George is getting married. She convinces them to throw George a bachelor party at her place. Leah, ever the schemer, manages to get a drunken George alone, where he immediately comes on to her again. She tells him she wants to get away from the crowd, and they leave together. She takes him back to his house, which he shares with his strict uncle Henry, played by Victor Franson. Once inside, Leah intentionally creates a ruckus, waking Uncle Henry, who is furious at George for bringing her there and potentially creating an embarrassment for their family. George responds with violence. You were made for each other. You were just alike. Get out before I throw you out, stop it. I've had enough, stop it. 20 years, you've done nothing but talk and order me around. For 20 years, I've stood trembling before you. You, the man with the money, the man with the power. But I've had enough. This is the end. No more preaching from you. I'm not afraid of you or your threats anymore. What do you say to that? George! George! Afterwards, Leah convinces George to hide the body, bury it, and explain his uncle is away on vacation. George offers to give her a reward for her help and to stay silent. She refuses money, however, telling him the one thing she has always wanted is to have a big house on St. Charles Street. His house, in fact, with her as his wife. George once again gives in to blackmail and the town is shocked at the news of their marriage. Although she has gotten everything she wanted, Leah soon realizes she still isn't happy. Fabian returns from sea to confront her about the latest developments and storms off, disgusted. Eventually, the police begin searching for Uncle Henry and uncover his body. With the body, they find a gold watch that is inscribed to Captain Fabian. George planted it there, knowing the police would find it. They arrest Fabian for Henry's murder. Worried that Fabian will manage to implicate him in his uncle's murder, George supplies a mob of miscreants with rum and hires them to break into the jail and kill Fabian. Meanwhile, Fabian's men catch word of what is about to occur and sneak into the jail through a secret tunnel, freeing him just before the angry mob breaks in. 
Finally, some action occurs in this movie as the mob attacks Fabian's men on the docks. A giant battle ensues, during the course of which Fabian and George square off in a fight to the finish. Adventures of Captain Fabian was a real pet project for Errol Flynn, who wrote the script as well as appeared in the film. He teamed up with producer-director William Marshall, who was married in real life to lead actress Michelin Prell, to make the film. This was Marshall's first film as a director. He would go on to direct the 1961 film The Phantom Planet. Laws at the time demanded that a separate French-language version of the film be shot, so they brought in director Robert Florey, with whom Price had worked previously on Rogue's Regiment, to work on this film. The French version was never filmed, however, but Flory stayed on set for the duration of the shoot, working as an uncredited consultant. The most interesting element of the film is the final fight between Price and Flynn, in which Price dies a watery death. screen fight also occurred between the two actors in real life as well, as Vincent was only paid a portion of his agreed upon salary. He had to sue Flynn in court, and it was three years before he finally received the remaining $15,000 of his $35,000 contract. Overall, The Adventures of Captain Fabian is a slow-moving, talky melodrama. It's still worth watching for fans of Price and Flynn, however, despite its not taking full advantage of the talent of either star. Agnes Moorhead is quite good in this one as well. Price would go on to work with her again in the films The Bat and The Story of Mankind. Next up, Price would appear in the 1951 star-studded film noir, His Kind of Woman. It's a matter of positive proof. dairy products in my cooking horrors but how do you tell real dairy foods from imitations check the ingredient list or check for the real seal it tells you at a glance it's a real dairy food the american dairy association assures it so to get the taste of real cheese real cream read this or see the real seal <laughs> frightfully simple you know it's real when you see the real